because it was a part of God's Jeremiah 29, 11 for your life. And so we all came together at the crossroads of the South, and we are united uh, by a grand spirit that I want to just use the word ministry, because in a day and age that we live in, people are so consumed with themselves, and many times Christians are so consumed with themselves that they forget that there's a higher calling, and that's ministry. Uh, I'll come back to that in just a minute. Uh, I got a call yesterday from an inmate in the Cayman Islands, and uh, he had seen the trio on this program that aired last Saturday, 3 a.m., which uh, that company, I met the president of that company at Larry Goss's funeral, did not even know who he was or existed before then. <coughs> and so they own 130 TV stations all over the world. Uh, second largest gospel TV stations in America. Uh, they have seven networks. They have one in French, one in Russian, one in Spanish, and about four more. So uh, this inmate from the Cayman Islands called, and he said, I'm an inmate, but I'm in charge of prison ministry in uh, this particular prison in the Cayman Islands. So he said, could you send me some CDs because I want to share them and pass them around to inmates in this prison. And um, of course, we will. But it reminded me of the fact that 1% of our population is incarcerated. And we leave this place and we go out and we get in our car and we go where we want to because we're free. But 1% of the United States population is behind bars for all kinds of legitimate reasons, and unfortunately, many times, not good reasons. And you and I both know that many times people are put in prisons, and they're not guilty. But once they're there, they've lost this thing we call life. It's sucked out of them. And so the whole ministry comes into effect when people go to the trouble to say, I'm forgetting about myself. I will go to the trouble to go to a prison ministry and share the gospel with inmates. <clears throat> a friend of mine, Nancy Wood, that we met at when the trio was doing a TV taping in, in Detroit. And uh, we uh, shared a song with her, I Feel Heaven in This Place. And she started singing it in the prison that she does uh, ministry in. And uh, the prisoners learned it. I feel heaven in this place. There's a verse in there that says, I feel healing in this place. So they learned it. And she felt like she had to sing it every time she would go. So this Sunday morning, she relays to me, she said, I went and I decided I wasn't going to sing it. She went there and she told the inmates that they weren't going to do I Feel Heaven in This Place. That particular, they ended up doing I Feel Heaven in This Place because you don't tell inmates that they're not going to sing a song that they want to sing. So they're singing I Feel Healing in This Place. And she said, we're singing, and this black inmate jumps up and down. He says, I can see. I can see. We're not talking about scriptural when Jesus walked the shores of Galilee. We're talking about 2015, and somebody goes to the trouble to say, I'm going to give of myself to minister to inmates in a prison, and an inmate receives his sight. So I'm only saying that to you because I think that all of us are united by the word ministry. We went there. You may have not thought you went there for ministry. We're all involved in ministry somehow, some way, some fashion. You say, I'm not the preacher. I'm not the minister. You are a minister. You minister to people who need to find God. You minister to people on your job or what? Let me backtrack. We should be ministering to people on our job with our life and our words and all that. So I'm thankful that God allowed me to be an architect of songs instead of an architect of buildings because that's what I thought I was supposed to do. And it took me quite a few, 14 years to figure out what God wanted me to do. <clears throat> God knew all along where he had to take me to get me to where I needed to go. So I'm, I'm really thankful that God has allowed me to be a part of your life. Uh, I have to confess that some of the stories that you relay, I honestly,
honestly don't remember. I, that's not just a senior moment thing. Uh, it's not just getting older thing. But uh, I read something recently that says, you know, the older you get, the more you have on your disc. And your disc gets full. My disc is full. So fortunately for many of you, I don't remember some of those things. <clears throat> uh, by the way, I don't know if you had a chance to uh, see the trio on this last Saturday. We did another taping, which is going to air this Saturday on 3ABN Network. Uh, you can get it different ways. Uh, Dish Channel 9393, or you can download an app on your phone, 3ABN, or you can go on your laptop to 3ABN.org and then click on Watch Listen. And then they've got seven networks, so you'll click on 3ABN. Uh, why this is special to me this coming Saturday that you'll see uh, this lady from Russia who is in charge of their TV station in Russia. You may remember a few months back uh, a journalist who was anti-government in Russia was killed. Okay, that was her brother. And it just so happens in the last few months her husband somehow died in a swimming accident in Russia. And the next Monday, her employees were going to be called in for interrog interrogation. Okay? This is the world that we live in. So the first program that I did by myself sometime, you know, a month ago, and we sang Whatever It Takes, and she listened to that program. She was very affected by it. Uh, and so she's going to show up on this program that you'll see Saturday. And uh, so we're all singing Whatever It Takes. And so she, at the end, she... She says the words, that's what I'll be willing to do in Russian. Now, why that's touching to me is the fact that this woman is the song. You know, some people say, I can't sing that song yet. It's too hard for me to sing. This woman is that song. So I'm, I'm glad that uh, God has allowed us all to be a part uh, connected at the hip with JCM. I went to my 55th class reunion in high school, and it's not the same. You know, I went to the 50th, I went to the 55th, and I was a very important part of what went on there and all the activities. But, you know, when I went to high school, I didn't fit in then. Uh, I never went to a football game in my high school because we had young people service on Friday night, and there was no choice. I went to young people service, never went to one football game in my high school. So my high school classmates didn't really know me. Uh... And I couldn't really connect with them like maybe some others did. <clears throat> so when I went to the 40th, it's kind of like I was almost a celebrity. Uh, you know how like the football players are at high school level because in that interim, people had, had uh, come in contact with the music that God passed through my pen. And so oh, we sang your song and we did this. Uh, so I'm thinking my 55th, which was just recently, it's not the same. We have a connection in the spirit. See, it's not just JCM. It's a connection in the spirit. Uh, we're going to do this God's family thing here in a minute. <clears throat> this was very interesting. Uh, the trio was at Steve Gregory's church in Pennsylvania maybe a year ago. And he had this idea. He said, you know, I would like to do this where we, where we video, video you from eight angles. And we would do a cyber choir. I wasn't really familiar with the technique. So that at your home going, whenever that would be, that we would play this and we would be able to have people from around the world singing as a part of God's family. And you'd be directing them. So I thought that's a cool idea. So they videoed that. And so when we were planning the reunion for this July, I said, wouldn't it be great if we could do that for, that was a bad idea on my part, because of so much work involved. I mean, it was a tremendous amount of work and technology. So what you'll see here is, this is not really the finished project. Uh, there are 116 people from uh, different countries all over the world. You'll, you'll notice where they're from. Um, so they would, the technology was hard. Some of you saw and you said it's too hard to figure out. And some people said, well, I can't figure it out. Have your grandkid figure out how to do it on the phone. Yeah, it, was, it was very involved. It was not easy to do. But we ended up with 116 people that, that did it. And so at the end, you'll see all those 116 people and it looks like you're singing stills, but they're all singing. But it's, it's so small that you can't realize that. <clears throat> so
So I want to do this. Uh, they have a certain term for mixing down. See, this is not like just mixing a video. You're mixing 116 videos at the same time and syncing them all together. That's why all that business about you have to wait till the click and all that kind of thing. So what happens is the first part of this, the trio was singing live, so you won't see the trio. So we'll all be the, the trio. We'll all sing it. And when we do this, Kevin, if I can get you and Tracy and James to sing with me, just uh, hopefully we'll get the entrance right. If we don't, we'll just start over. <coughs> so then a lot of these people uh, that really were singing, you don't get to see them up close and personal. So I want to redo this so we get a lot more close-up shots, okay? Uh, so we'll try to do this. Um, so this is kind of like what we did for um, the July event. It's, it's finished, but it's not finished. I didn't mean that to sound like that. Where's the sound coming from? The, the family that's been born. Okay, let's see if we can make this work. Oh, okay, so what happens here is when Steve Gregory tried to send this to us today, he said it was like 635 gig. Obviously, it's big. So I evidently, maybe only that much of it downloaded. This is a download problem, you understand. Part of the family. Okay, we won't do that. Uh, somehow, we'll, yeah, we'll get it and we'll post it. You, you'll see it later. Okay? Uh, it was really wonderful, uh, the whole idea. And hopefully we won't have to use that at home going uh, for a while. I mean, uh, 2012, I was in an accident that I thought I was actually going to die. Um, I was 59 South, for those of you who know Houston. Six lanes, I'm in the middle, uh, five lanes. Uh, rush hour, six o'clock at night, 60 miles an hour, we're going down. And here's an entire tire in the middle lane. Not an alligator track, entire tire. I'm in a Jaguar and it's low. So I know that I can't negotiate it I know that I can't run over it, and if I run into it, only God knows, it could be in my windshield or somebody else's. So I had to do one of those quick evaluations, you understand that. And uh, cars are in all the lanes, so I thought I'll go to the right, and uh, I did one of two things, or both things wrong. I either turned the wheel too quickly, or put on the brakes too quickly, or both and the car spun four and a half times around four and five into the shoulder and I rammed into the back end of a truck that was in the shoulder that was changing a tire. 
I mean, I actually thought I was going to die. I honestly thought, and you understand what this is. If you've ever been in an accident like that, the car is spinning. I have no control. I, God, it's in your hands. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Fortunately, there were no cars in four or five. I don't know how that happened except God. And uh, when I when the car finally stopped, and I just shut off the car, and I just said, "Okay, I'm going to go." And I just have you can't even tell now, but I have a scar that was right at a right line above my eyelid. Um, so it was a wake up call for me to get a will. You know, a lot of times we just say we'll do that sometime. Uh, and I thought to myself, wow, if this would have happened today, I would have been so unfair to my children because they wouldn't even know what bank account. I, they wouldn't even know how to get. You understand what I'm saying? I'm saying this because all of us need to be more conscious of that. So anyway, uh, the Bible says what? I've not promised you tomorrow. I've not promised you tomorrow. Um, some of you may have been in school when Mitch Nickens was there. Does anybody remember that? Mitch was there. The church folks won him to the Lord came to JCM, left JCM, went to Dallas. The next thing I know, he's about 31, and uh, and we find out that he's dying of AIDS. And um, so he passed away, went blind, uh, shipping the body back to Houston. And uh, they wanted Brother Kraft to do the funeral, and they wanted Reed and I to do the music. Well, this was really hard for me because I had never known anybody had died of AIDS. It was just, for whenever that was, it was just a, kind of a whole new thing. And so I remember wrestling with God about this. I just didn't get it. I didn't understand it. Didn't want to do the music at the funeral. God woke me up in the middle of the night, Jeannie, and said, I've not promised you tomorrow either. And it doesn't matter whether it's 31 or 81. To me, in my world, all life is short. And God went on to say, as a matter of fact, no one brings anything to the bargaining table. Because I thought, what does this guy have to offer God, even if he did a bedside, you know, a surrender and all that kind of thing? God said, nobody brings anything to the bargaining table except themselves, you included. So that's when I wrote the song. Some of you may remember the song, His Grace is Still Amazing to Me. And the second verse talks about take a life that's been broken and marred by sin. Life is short, folks, for all of us. Uh, and I think what happens between JCM and where we are now is life intercepts. And sometimes things go wrong. Sometimes things don't go as planned. And the devil will try to get you to make you think that you're not worthy to work for God or that you can't work for God or can't, God can't really use you. God wants your gift, Kevin. And gifts are without recall, are they not? And since Satan can't get your gift, he'll do whatever he can to you to get you to not use the gift. So I want to remind you, some of you are sitting here and you're saying that, wait, maybe I gave up a dream. Maybe God uh, has given up on me. Maybe Satan has convinced me I'm too old. I'm too weak. I'm too vulnerable. I'm too flawed. Remember, Noah was a drunk. Abraham was too old. Sarah was certainly too old. Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob was a liar. Leah was ugly. <laughs> Poor Leah. <laughs> Joseph was abused. M Moses had a stuttering problem. Hey, why, my brother. God said, shut up. I got the right number, and I know your name. Gideon was afraid. Samson had long hair and was a womanizer. Rahab was a prostitute. Jeremiah and Timothy were too young. David had an affair and was a murderer. If David tried to get on our praise team today, Hector, we wouldn't let him. Are you kidding you're a murderer and an adulterer. You're going to sit in the back pew for about three years, and then you can come back to the uh, board, and we'll test you again. Elijah was suicidal. Isaiah preached naked. <laughs> well, you didn't have to get so excited about that. <laughs> Jonah ran from God. 
Naomi was a widow. Job went bankrupt. John the Baptist ate bugs. Peter denied Christ. The disciples all fell asleep on the job, did they not? Martha worried about everything. Mary Magdalene was a demon-possessed woman. The Samaritan woman was divorced and more than once. Zacchaeus was too small. Paul was too religious. Timothy had an ulcer. And Lazarus was dead. God can use you. <laughs> I'm saying that because some of you need to, to be reminded that wherever you are in this journey called life, God wants to use you today. You say, but I failed or I gave up or I didn't do this or I felt like I didn't do God's will at this crossroads or I feel like that I'm not worthy. All those reasons you want to throw at God. God said, I put all these people in the book so you could be reminded that I use flawed people. I use people that are not perfect and you're one of them. So aren't you glad that God uses all of us? God sees all of us. I love the scripture that says, uh, Philippians 1, 6, you know it. Being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will. This word in the American Standard Version, King James said, will perform it. The American Standard said, will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. Edison was how many tries perfecting the light bulb? Thousands of times perfecting. So God is perfecting us, and we're not perfect yet. And Satan would come at us daily and say, you're not worthy to work for God. God doesn't want to, excuse me, you know, God worked with imperfect people. God works with us. Aren't you glad God works with us? minister dies and is waiting at the pearly gates. Ahead of him is a man dressed in loud shirt, jeans, and sunglasses. Peter asked, who are you? The man replied, Joe Cohen, taxi driver, New York City. Peter checked his list, handed him a silk robe and a gold staff, and said, enter into heaven. The minister steps forward and says, I'm Joseph Snow, pastor of St. Mary's Cathedral in Memphis, Tennessee. Peter checks his list and handed him a cotton robe and a wooden staff. The minister said, wait a minute. The taxi driver gets a silk robe I get, and a gold staff. How can this be? Peter replied, up here, we work by results. When you preached, people slept. When he drove, people prayed. <laughs> so it's results that count. Uh, do we have time to sing it? because we have to get out here by 11. If you don't mind, can you uh, scoot some stuff up here closer? If, well, if you can't, don't do that. Whoa. Uh, I was at the piano at FPC 930 on a Sunday morning, and God just dropped this into my head. Jesus be the Lord of Jesus be Mississippi, they invited the trio, and the Lord gave me surely the presence that day. Uh, a friend of mine uh, in the music industry, uh, he was accompanying a, a, a group from Benson at Dr. Cho's church in Korea. Little church of, what, a million folks. They have 11 services on Sunday, over 100,000 each. So he said they were in a service, and they were singing surely the presence in all these different languages at the same time. 
He said it was the most heavenly thing he'd ever experienced. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can kind of humorous to me is that was one of the songs I'd use when people auditioned for choir. And I remember some folks, I'd have to hold their hand. They were so nervous. They honestly were nervous. I said, it's okay. I'll hold your hand. Let's sing. And some of these kids that come in from, uh, they've been on drugs, etc. So they would say, I can hear the rush of angels' wings. <laughs> and other things. I actually got to the point, this sounds like this isn't true, I got to the point where I really didn't know what the correct words to that third line was because I'd heard so many variations from people trying out. Uh, uh, God gave this to me when I was 18, 17. Only Jesus can satisfy. Now, if you're hearing something wrong, it's from that mic. Uh, won't be alive tomorrow. Lord, you know I need a friend.
Savior found me.
There's a voice calling me from an old rugged tree, and it whispers, draw closer to thee, leave this world To a land. To a land. Here. And if you call me someday. Today. To a today. land. Got to get this straight. Far away. That's what 
God's hands. Let's pray for each other. Um, David Bernard's mother, missionary to, I believe, Korea. She was so sick, she realized that she couldn't pray for herself. Um, she came back to the States for furlough. They were in Michigan, and a sister said, what was happening to you on such and such a date? And Sister Bernard said, that was the very day that I was so sick, I could not pray for myself. And this dear sister said, that was the very night that God woke me up in the middle of the night and said, get out of bed and pray for Loretta Bernard. We have a big network. It's bigger than AT&T and Sprint. It's amazing. You can be sick here, and God could call your name to someone halfway around the world. Uh, remember when the fax machines came in? Uh, Lana Marie was working uh, in the music office. And I don't remember what year that was, but we just got a fax machine. And I had met Molly Kelly. She's a gospel artist from the Union of South Africa. And so I'm over in 10. I think that was 10 is next to the office, music office. And uh, so I'm over there giving a lesson. Lana Marie runs over with a sheet of paper. She said, we got a fax. Because we never got, we didn't even hardly know what a fax was. She said, we got a fax. And so I read the fax, and it said, Lanny. Just wanted you to know that I'm thinking about you and praying for you, Molly Kelly, Union of South Africa. I met a Christian artist, and to think, I was going through a trial at that time. God laid my name on her heart halfway around the world. So you're not alone. You're never alone. Satan would want you to think you're alone. You're not alone. Someone is praying. protect us as we go our way. And before I turn this back over to James, I'd like for us all to give honor where honor is due. And that's simply James and Tracy have done an awful lot to make this what it is. We appreciate them very much. Thank you, James. Thank you. We had great help. We had Nancy. We had Shelly. We had Laurie Carruthers for a while, but she didn't get to come. Kevin here. And let's give them all a hand. And thank you, Brother Wolf. Thank you, Wade. Also, Wade, for all his work. And this is how we would end every chorale tour, right? Yeah. Protect us as we go our way. Or
to say thanks to James and Tracy and the team. Um, I was on the list, but I didn't do Jack. Uh, yeah, that's, that's right. Um, I appreciate it. Yes, the advisor, thank you. Um, believe it or not, after 27 years, 28 years of being out of JCM, I'm back in school, so. Uh, I'm so thankful that we were able to have this. Uh, Brother Wolf, I want to say, along with James, how uh, incredibly thankful that I am for your influence in our lives. There were days we uh, hated you and days we loved you. And uh, that's the kind of leader that makes people their best. And so uh, you, you were the master at commanding a service and uh, going into the place that could have been dead and dry and bringing the presence of God there. And I know you took a lot of hits over the years and a lot of criticism, uh, but um, I'm forever grateful for everything you've done. I know you're not perfect. Uh, none of us are, but no mistake we ever make undoes the anointing that God brings through us and undoes the good that God has used to do through us. And, and uh, one of my mottos through the years has been, keep your mouth shut because except for the grace of God, there goes you. And, uh, and I just want to thank you for uh, enduring the storms that you've been through in life and never stopping. I'm proud of you for, for working as hard as you're working right now. It'll keep you living long. And uh, as always, I believe if we don't stop, God won't stop pouring. And so as long as you're willing, he's going to keep using you to change the world like you've always done. And so thank you for the inspiration you've given us. And he's not here, but I want to give honor to Brother Kraft. Um, I'll never forget the night at, I think it was Jackson 84, something like that, when he was doing the conferences, um, where I walked down to the front, and for some reason it was one of those weird God moments, but he took his hands and he put them on my head, and when he did, I felt electricity go through me, and, uh, and it just flooded me. I, I don't know how else to describe it except it was like a download. I went to the hotel where I was staying with my dad that night, and I was literally drunk. I walked through the door, and this girl looked at me behind the desk, and she looked at me funny, and I realized she thinks I'm drunk. And I looked at her, and I said, you think I'm drunk, don't you? She said, yes. I said, well, I'm not drunk like you think I'm drunk. <laughs> uh I said, I, I just came out of a church service, and she yeah. said, yeah, oh, yeah, right. I said, no, let me tell you about it, and I told her about it. This girl's completely unchurched, and uh, I told her about the love of Jesus, and that was it. I found out uh, later that the girl that worked at that little Hampton Inn at the end of Beasley Road, uh, where it connects to the highway there, had given her heart to Jesus and was living for God, I think in Brother Dylan's church somewhere in Mississippi. So uh, I'll never forget that. Brother Kraft later said he felt like virtue fl flowed out of him, and that's that's just how he was. He was always pouring out. He was always giving. It's like Tim said a little bit ago. He said he, he was focused on you. And uh, and the legacy that, that we got from JCM, I got to stop by there with my kids. And my, and my wife on vacation. We passed through there. Another group had already taken it over. And I almost got in bad trouble because he, he let me in. But then he said no cameras. But I took a picture anyway because I had to go stand in front of room 4A, which was the prayer room while we were there because that's where God changed my life and many, many times. The depth, uh, and I, I promise you I'm shutting up, but Patty, listen. I'll never forget the day we sat on the front row when Rex came and preached. It was our beginning of the year revival. He was wearing a Countess Mara tie, 
And uh, I don't think we remember anything that he preached that day because we were too busy watching the sweat line go from his knot down to the bottom of the tie. And when it finally dropped off the tip of his tie and hit the floor, we were like, whoa, it's like he scored a touchdown or something. But during that revival, we laid in the floor, sweat covering us, but we didn't care. It was just the presence of God. It changed my life forever. I, I owe like a massive debt of gratitude to Jackson College Ministries. And I am forever grateful to God for allowing me to be a part of that culture. So thank you for everyone for being here. I love you. I appreciate you uh, and your friendship. And, um, and let's don't stop doing it. You know, you get busy. But when these things come up, we need to connect uh, because it's what keeps us strong. Father, I thank you so much for your love for us. Thank you for your presence. And I'm asking you to just continue to increase in us because, God, there's no way that we can do what we're called to do without your presence today. The world is too messed up, and we need a divine encounter with you and your love. And God, whether whether we're in an organization or out of an organization or, 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 or even living for God or not, we're still family. And I pray that you would tonight just feel a special touch on my heart to pray for those that have been a part of us in the past that aren't living for you tonight. I pray, God, that you would just reach out to them in a way that only you can. God, just arrest their hearts with your love. Help them to know this is not about religion. It's about relationship with you. Let your love capture them. And whatever wounds have been inflicted on their hearts and wherever they are across this nation tonight, even the globe, let the spirit that you've put in all of us bring us back together into your family. And I pray you'd bless us all, our churches, our jobs, our homes, our families. Jesus, I pray. Amen. Could we just do one thing just before you leave? I know you're tired. Could we all just kind of gather up here and take a couple of group shots and so we can post this on Facebook? And thank you so much, all of you, for coming. This was a blast. Thank you for Brother, Brother Wolf for all you did. Yeah, if we could just come.